Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's mentoring session, which is the first one for our spring 2022. We keep this time open. Yes, uh, we are waiting for our students to join. Good morning to each and every one year who have joined to our weekly mentoring hour. Before we could begin, we can start with a word of prayer. I'm just waiting for some of our students to join in. Okay, we will start with a word of prayer. Reading, uh, reading from chapter Psalms, chapter 16, verse 7 and 8. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Let's pray. Dear Father, we come into your presence this day. We submit ourselves, our faculty, our students in your hand. Lord, we pray that you will minister to each one of us. You will increase us in your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, we pray that you will lead each one of us and you will guide each one of us. You will minister to each one of us, Lord. We surrender this time in your hand. Thank you, Father, for your word, which is a light, which brings light to each one of us, oh, Father, which brings clarity to each one, Lord. Father, I surrender each and every one in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we keep this time open to each one to ask questions or share your thoughts where we can discuss, clarify on any topics or any questions that you have in your mind pertaining to the subject or ministry. So, so yes, you can unmute and ask questions or you can type your questions on the chat. And we have a faculty to help us answer those questions. Thank you. Over to our students. We don't have any uh, anyone asking questions, but maybe we could uh, yes, Master. ask um, uh, you know like people to share uh, what they are doing. Uh, maybe like Zelatoli or Anita, or, you know, or just share a little bit about anything they're doing in the ministry, things like that, or their. Yes, sure, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, uh, we have Zeli or Kiran, Anita. Uh, would you like to come forward to unmute and share, like, what's happening in your ministry and how you serve in the area where you are? Okay. Good morning, Pastors. Good morning. Um, well, um, currently. I'm in APC, Kohima, and I'm just uh, helping my pastor out here. And, and I'm glad that I'm here, you know, at the right time, in the right uh, you know, season. God has brought me here, and I'm so blessed to be a part of APC, Kohima. Like, and I'm glad that Pastor Hormi is my mentor, and I'm learning so many, uh, you know, things of the Spirit from her, and like, uh, she's such an amazing woman of God, and it's a joy and honor to be working along with her. 
and I'm great. I'm, I'm I'm glad. Yeah, I'm just so happy. Yeah, and I'm growing in the Lord. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Zeli. Thank you. Kiran, you would love uh, you would like to share? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Praise Good the morning. Lord, sir, ma'am. Uh, Praise the Lord. I want to just share a little bit for my ministry here. I I was leader in my church, the my mother church, and over there they I I learned so many things and but not like experience like that. But when I I just came to theology logy in APC and I I grow in spirit and word growing and maturing and also uh, in my mother church they gave me opportunity as a pastoring and uh, I I I used to go some some time and share word of God between uh, 30 40 some some time 60 also God is using me uh, and next experience uh, Last year, 2009, uh, 21 December month, I, with my, 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 my pastor, they, they gave me like res responsibility to take some part. So I, I first, first of all, I just, uh, I afraid, but I, I feared between them, but God uh, gave me that the strength then I came forward and I I used to share the word of God as a nice experience last month I received like pastoring and all it 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 blessed me me and also I wanted to thank to APC officer and all faculty Nancy ma'am and all want to just say thanking you so many things I learned from APC and uh, their, uh, all faculties, their lifestyle is so much encouraging me and all. And just, I received that and I just came forward in my church, mother church. And over there, the youth is there, so many. And and different uh, faith, they came over there. And say, they also used to saw me as a, uh, as like uh, something. And they also maturing. Thank you. Praise God. That's wonderful to hear, Kiran. Thank you so much for sharing. Very encouraging. And praise God for every door that is open to you, for you to minister and serve there. Good. Thank you so much. God bless. Yes, anyone would like to share about how you're ministering in the area where you are? Brother Isaac, Anita, would you like to share? Mm. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, Anita. So I just wanted to say, I mean, uh, it's very nice to be here. I'm in Karwar, actually, and uh, I'm serving here in my local church. So due to lockdown, we are having the online service. So uh, I mean, I am I'm teaching. Uh, I mean, actually, I'm teaching for junior church uh, students, and I'm translating. Uh, I'm a translator, actually, in my church. So we have two services actually, uh, Kannada uh, and Kukni and English and Hindi service. So I translate for Hindi and uh, I mean in Kukni I, I do translation. And uh, uh, I think my pastor is also joining here, uh, Pastor Nicholson. Uh, I mean, you all know about uh, him. So along with him, we are just, he recently became pastor of our church after his uh, father-in-law's death. So... We, uh, I mean, we all are helping him along with, uh, along with his ministry. Uh, I do, I, I mean, sometimes I do preach as well in Canada. So, yeah, God has been uh, good. Uh, every time he has been, he's teaching me and I'm, I'm learning so many things here in Karwar. I was in Bangalore uh, uh, past a few years. Then I came back in lockdown and I'm here in, here uh, from past uh, two years now. So God has been great. He's uh, teaching me everything uh, day by day. I'm learning so many things from me. Uh, just to this Bible college as well. So so many things that I'm learning and thank I'm thanking God and everyone for 
uh, giving me this opportunity. I mean, uh, giving me this uh, platform to learn God's word. And thank you. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. And it's wonderful to know that how God is. Um... open up an opportunity for you to translate in your church and minister to the junior children's uh, children uh, that's really wonderful praise god for that yes uh, yeah brother isaac rupa uh, would you like to share would yes like to share yeah yes brother please go ahead um praise god yeah for my time i have been spent with uh, abc uh, i want to appreciate all of us and all of you in the faculty that taught us for the first for the first semester i think we are gaining a lot of insight uh into the bible and we are get, becoming more interesting and more more informed and now what is obtaining in my local church like i stated before i was working uh in the airline industry i was working at the airport and i just retired in 2019 uh but before that uh, i have been playing an active role in my church but in an administrative role because like i stated before uh, my wife started the ministry and she has been running the ministry i've been helping her in ad- in an administrative role but prior to my uh, retirement i was always telling myself that after retirement i want to play a more active role in the ministry well I, i always look at myself that maybe i cannot be a very good preacher but i'm interested in teaching so that's why i really count my blessing that i discovered uh, abc um this is where we are now i thank god for that but um recently uh my wife who is the head of the church and the church elders have decided to do an ordination which is coming up um, on the 13th of february and my wife has asked that uh, i should be ordained well uh, i wanted to decline i said uh, i really want to study more because at least if i have to teach if i have to propagate the word of god i think i need more knowledge but i think my spirit is telling me that i can do the ordination and then still continue my bible studies so that's where we are but i have accepted to do the ordination so i thank god for that and uh, i want you uh, in faculty to help me in prayers so that at least i will develop more spirit more interest and become a useful instrument in the propagation of god's word praise god thank you praise god amen thank you amen. thank you brother is for sharing it's wonderful to hear yes yes pastor john paul has posed the question saying then when it is when they persecute you in town feed to the next how does this imply it anyone related to this question please yeah i would um, yeah so the uh, matthew 10:23 uh, obviously uh, I, i think uh, we just have to understand what jesus is saying uh, when he sent his disciples um and they persecuted one town go to the next now of course in those days towns were very small you know just maybe a few hundred people or sometimes maybe a few thousand people compared to uh towns and cities in our time 
So the scale of things is uh, something we have to keep in mind. So, and plus, um, I think the underlying thought there in Matthew 10, 23 is preserve your own, you know, protect yourself. Uh, so we don't necessarily have to leave town to protect ourselves. The point is that uh, we will face persecution wherever we are, and uh, we have to take safety measures. So one is, uh, I think it's even it's better to be preventive uh, rather than reactive. Uh, so when we know that there is uh, hostility towards the church, towards the ministry, uh, we take preventive measures to protect our lives and the lives of the people involved to whatever extent we can. Uh, we don't have to leave town to do that. Uh, we can protect people staying where we are. So uh, I think the, the, the whole essence of what Jesus is saying there is we are more useful to God alive than dead. So, you know, stay alive as long as you can. Keep yourself alive and be useful to the Lord. Um, and so, uh, you know, we take uh, preventive measures to protect uh, our, our lives and the lives of the people uh, that we are responsible for. Uh, and we don't have to leave town to do that. Uh, yeah, sure, Pastor. Pastor, one follow-up question, like Pastor. Sure. Uh, oh, what is that? Okay. If you pass, are we supposed to file court cases? Is it biblical? Um, I think, uh, so the answer is yes. Um, uh, and the reasons that we could say is this. One, um, a, the Bible tells us, uh, and we see this in many places, in Romans 13th chapter, uh, in First Peter chapter 2, uh, the Bible teaches us that government is a, a God-appointed institution in order to protect the people, civil government. So uh, therefore, everything that is made available to us through the civil government, we have to leverage. In as much as we have, uh, the Bible gives us a responsibility to be accountable to civil government, uh, we also therefore derive the benefits of being accountable to the civil government, which is, of course, you know, um, to leverage the judicial system to protect ourselves. So that's one point of view, one, one thing to consider. The second thing to consider is just to look at what the Apostle Paul himself did in the book of Acts. Uh, when he was apprehended, uh, he said, uh, you know, I, I, and he uh, he first of all he was mistried or it was a mistrial because he was he being a roman citizen uh, should not have been treated the way he was treated uh, when he was apprehended uh, so there was a violation and what did he do he said i appeal to caesar that means he, it's almost like i appeal to the Sup supreme court because the lower court has mishandled my case. They didn't treat me well. They didn't do what they're supposed to do. So um, he had the option. They were willing to let him go. You know, they realized their mistake. They were willing to let him. But he said, no, I appeal to Caesar. And uh, so basically it was like appealing to the Supreme Court. And then they said, okay, if you appeal to Caesar, we have to send you to Rome. And so that's why Paul ended up in Rome, uh, which resulted, of course, in the gospel being brought into the Roman palace and so on. So we look at Paul's example uh, there, and he did leverage the uh, civil system that was available during his time. So on both counts, we can say that, yes, uh, it, is, uh, it is something uh, right for us to do uh, in the face of uh, you know, persecution and so on. Hope that helps, John. Yeah, sure, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, John, for the question. Um, Zeli, sorry, I lost your question as I rejoined. I see your question on the chat. Can I request you to please unmute and ask your question? Yeah, sure, Pastor. Like, uh, I have a question regarding suicide, you know. Like, um, I learned about so many pastors and church leaders committing suicide and, you know, and people have their different views regarding suicide, that all those things. So I'm a bit confused regarding the issue of suicide. And many church leaders and believers also struggle with suicidal thoughts and all those things. So my question is, 
if a person commits suicide and if that person is a believer, will he or she go to heaven or what happens, you know, if you all can uh, shed some light, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Zevi. Uh, can I request Pastor Nancy, would you like to take up this question, please? Uh, yes, Pastor Anna, thank you. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, Zeli, from my understanding, um, uh, you know, uh, something like uh, suicide, I am sure Pastor would explain it better to you, but from my understanding, I don't see why, uh, uh, you know, an act like this would disqualify you from uh, the, you know, the, the, the blessings that God has given uh, uh, a person who's saved. So when you're in Christ Jesus, uh, I, I don't see why you would miss heaven if at all you know, a believer uh, ends their life for whatever reason. And I also know that you know sometimes uh, the cause for uh, someone to uh, come to this conclusion could be that they are battling a mental illness, and uh, you know, out of the uh, that, uh, if you want to call it you know, that sickness, somebody came to that conclusion. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't see why God would not, um, based on His Word and the finished work of the cross, let them experience uh, you know the the reward of salvation and heaven. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think I would leave it. With just that, I think Pastor would be better to answer this. Pastor, please. Yeah, I'll just uh, pick up where Nancy uh, left. So, Zelitoli, um, you know, um, uh, so the, the fact is, yes, a lot of uh, believers, I mean, not a lot, but there are believers and there are even pastors uh, and Christian leaders who have committed suicide. So, there's the big question, you know, where will they go? Now, one point of view, that is, um, those who say that anyone who commits suicide will not go to heaven, they usually use Revelation, the 20th chapter, and the 8th verse. They, there it says, the cowardly, the unbelieving, you know, will not enter heaven. Basically, they will be in the lake of fire. Uh, so they, you know, they, they classify suicide as an act of cowardice or fear right? um, so that's why that's one of the scriptures they would use saying that you know if somebody commits suicide they won't go to heaven because it's a cowardly act they've given into fear etc but here's what i want us to think through right uh, suppose there is a believer and he has a lustful thought for a moment just imagine this situation right he's thinking lustful thoughts uh, may, uh, now and then the next second he, he or she has a heart attack and dies. So that believer did not have time to repent of those lustful thoughts. Now, as far as God is concerned, thought, uh, the sin in, in the thought realm is equal to sin in the deed realm, as far as God is concerned. There's no difference. That means, uh, like Jesus said in Matthew 5, if somebody looks at a woman lustfully to commit adultery, that is, sin in the thought is equal to sin indeed. That means he has committed adultery. Now, the same verse in Romans 20, verse 8 says that the immoral will not get into heaven. So the fact is, here's a believer who has sinned in the thought life, didn't have time to repent, died. Question is, where will the person go? Will he be sent to hell just because he didn't repent of that one sinful thought? Or is he saved by grace because of faith in Jesus Christ? Now, we will all recognize that, you know, we are all saved by grace through faith in Christ. And uh, that person is not going to go to hell just because, you know, of the scenario that we described. Uh, but Revelation 20 and verse 8 says, those who are immoral will go to hell, right? So, um, so on that same reasoning, that's why we say that, a believer who commits suicide. I mean, yes, that believer gives into fear 
or gives into a sense of hopelessness or gives into a sense of despair or gives into a sense of depression or as Nancy mentioned, sometimes it's some other form of mental illness. They give into it and they commit suicide. So we say, look, that one act is not going to send them to an eternal hell, but the fact that they are saved by grace stands. Uh, is that okay? So I hope you understood my reasoning. Yes, Pastor, it's clear. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Pastor, for the clarity. Thank you, Zali, for the question. We have another question from Abraham Ted. The right of your answers, please, is it okay to allow only vaccinated people to come to church? Pastor, would you like to take this question up? Oh, okay. So, uh, I, yeah, so Abraham, I can just share with you our approach. You know, what we have done here in Bangalore, of course, right now we're in lockdown, so we can't have services. Uh, but when we were allowed to have services, what we did was we only made recommendations. That means we are our recommendations or requests, right? We requested that only those um, uh, you know, after after vaccines were available, we requested, first of all, we encouraged people to get vaccinated. Then we requested that only those who are vaccinated attend in-person services. And we requested people, you know, to wear their masks and to be careful and all of that. So we didn't necessarily make these as rules, like we didn't enforce it. We didn't, you know, tell people, show us your vaccination certificate, etc. But we uh, only put it out there as a recommendation or as a request for the safety of everybody involved. So we didn't, now we know that some people came who are not vaccinated, they didn't believe in vaccines, but they wanted to attend service. We said, okay, that's your choice. Uh, but just keep in mind that uh, you're, you know, you may be at risk and you're putting others at risk also, but we're not prevent, we're not saying you cannot come to church. We're just saying uh, we recommend or we request that people are, you know, get both their vaccine shots before coming, uh, also wear masks and all that. So that's the approach we took. And, uh, you know, if you say um, biblically, uh, I, I think, you know, if you look at how God operates, God doesn't force us, but he tells us, you know, what's right and wrong. Right? And then he tells us to choose life. So if you look at, you know, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, he says, you know, behold, I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life, right? So it's like God tells us, this is right, this is wrong. I want you to choose what's right, but I'll leave the choice to you. Uh, you know, so maybe, I'm just trying to give us a little framework. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but maybe we could follow that example where we tell people, you know, this is good for you. It's good for all of us. Uh, please choose it. But we cannot, of course, force them to do it. Is that okay? Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yes, Pastor. Thank, you. thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Abraham. So I would encourage each of us to ask questions and share thoughts so that we all can learn together. Do any of us have any questions? You can either post it on the chat or you can unmute and ask your question. Or until then, uh, maybe we can start uh, sharing what's happening in our ministry in the area where we are. Can I request Rupa to please go and share? about the ministry in the place where you are serving. Yes. Good morning, everyone, and uh, praise the Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to share. During the Christmas season, God has given me, given us a thought. Uh, we moved to a place in, a, in the village where we are doing ministry. They don't, usually don't give rent uh, rented places for, ch for church worship. But in God's grace and uh, abundant mercy and in his plan, one person have come forward to rent his rice mill, old rice mill. He has renovated it for us and he has rented over it 
over to us. But because of COVID, we could not meet very often. Most of the services were online. But after we started physically meeting during this Christmas, because God has given us a prophecy over that place that he would give those people to God's kingdom, we started praying for it. And God has revealed that there was it was in a triangle that church is in one point. So we decided to invite the people around the church. There were about 25 families around. Most of them are Hindus and Muslims. So we were very apprehensive, but we prayed over it. And I selected uh, seven people to go and invite them. And uh, God was very good to us. They have op God has opened their hearts and they were ready, they invited and uh, uh, them into their homes and they were very uh, receptive in coming to the Christmas function. We have invited them over. So we have invited them over for worship on Christmas Day. They all, most of them came and some of them have sent their children as representatives. We, we prepared a uh, love feast for them and we were able to share the good news on that day and I really praise God in this time so difficult to reach out to Hindus God has made way for us to share his good news to them and also as we minister in a small uh, hospital campus it's like a township when we went there inside it is like an anti-Christian secular thing but we were very cautious and we went to the homes where we were invited for carols and while we were going and visiting those houses around 15 children from other faiths started following us wherever we went and we had the opportunity to invite them over for Christmas and I also had, had the opportunity to share the gospel with the little children. I really thank and praise God for that opportunity. And after the Christmas also, few of the families, I, I, I thought we should make it a point that they are invited into the church. They are accepted into the church as they are. And they can come whenever they can. So that is how we are doing continuing in the ministry God has called us to and also God has given me given us another thought saying that now I have we have selected two or uh, three women who are at home and they come from faith Hindu faith and they know that village very well so I told them to we are all praying and we are sending them two by two into the village at least to Say, share the gospel to few fa five families at least every week. That's what we are doing. Please pray for us that we will be in tune with God's guidance and reach out to the people in the campus and also in the village where we are doing the ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa, for sharing. We are happy to hear how God has opened the door the remote, the rural place. Thank you. Praise God. Yes. Um, anyone else would like to share? Roslyn, would you like to share about how you're ministering in the place where you are? Or Abraham, would you like to? Would you like to share? Um, please. please, what's the question again? Uh, would I like to share, share about, about your ministering in the place where you are? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I I'm currently in Vietnam and. Um, I, I happen to lead a small group, almost about 15 people. And I think we, we had a small venue uh, to have our meetings. And um, 
sometimes it feels as if um, I'm alone if I, you know, because of uh, the way I'm not really connected to any um, ministry here in Vietnam, all the ones that I'm connected to, they are far away. So sometimes when I get into our meetings like this or when I have pastors to talk to, uh, it's really an encouragement to receive counsel from uh, other pastors and other leaders. But besides that, I think by the grace of God, we have some of our meetings online and some of our meetings will be offline from next week. So I'm grateful to the Lord for what he's doing because uh, there was no vision. I mean, we, we had a personal inside us. We knew that, okay, this is what God wants to do. But we couldn't see that it, it's coming so soon. And by God's grace, uh, the people are transforming. The people are loving God. That's the most important thing that uh, I'm beginning to see the passion that they have for Christ. And uh, it looks as if uh, we all came here to make money. But most of them have been able to cancel their hours of classes just to pray, just to fellowship with us online. So I'm just grateful that we are doing our best as the Spirit of God will guide us and hoping that um, we'll continue and not give up. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham, for sharing. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, anyone else? Madhu Varati, would you like to share? about the ministry, how you're serving in the area where you are? Charles, would you like to share about the ministry, how you serve in the place where you are? Madhuvarati, you can go ahead if you are able to. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Good morning. Hi. Um, praise the Lord. I'm actually a student who is doing the e learning course from APCBC, and I joined the mentoring hour uh, to see. Uh, the questions and the answers that are uh, so that I can hear them and uh, be uh, learn something new. I'm actually a student. Uh, I completed my uh, B.Tech and I'm currently uh, trying to learn more about God. And I started doing this e-learning course just to equip myself and train myself more in Jesus Christ so that I can do the ministry of God later on in my life. So I thank you that uh, for giving me a, an opportunity to uh, learn the courses in the Bible College, and I uh, and I hope that uh, I learn more about Jesus Christ and I train myself better for the kingdom of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madhumati. Thank you so much for joining us on you know, the mentoring hour. Thank you. And we pray that God will continue to minister you. And... Okay. Anyone else would like to hear? Charles. So Roslyn. Okay. Okay, yes, there's no questions and um yeah, it's say thirty nine can yeah, be uh, I, I would like can to ask uh, I would like to ask yes. one question. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sure it's gonna help all of us. Um, so, uh, in, in church that we are serving in, <clears throat> uh, uh, so there are a couple of, uh, people from other faiths who've been coming to church for over about two and a half, three years now. And, um, you know, they are from other faiths, so they haven't really, you know, 
uh, whenever we've made altar calls, whenever we have, you know, asked, uh, you know, um, for baptism classes, they haven't really come forward. Uh, but one of the things that I've noticed is during the communion Sunday, when we celebrate the Lord's table, uh, they partake of it. Uh, now, there are times when I have gone and told them, see, uh, it, it's important to make that decision for Christ to, you know, to surrender your life. And uh, uh, so my question is more of, uh, so what do we do when, you know, we don't see a response from them, uh, but they're continuing to partake in the Lord's table. Uh, I did explain to them what the Lord's table is. Um, but they're not water baptized. They haven't really made that commitment, at least, um, you know, an outward commitment for us to know also. So my question is like, how do we handle this kind of situation? Um, do we tell them, you know, uh, Paul writes in First Corinthians, he says, you know, to take the Lord's table in a worthy manner. Uh, I'm sure they are, they, are, they are, of course, taking it. They are not disrespecting the Lord's table. But my concern is, do they really know uh, what they are doing, uh, what what the Lord's table is? So uh, my question is, do we request them to stop? Or do we let them continue to partake in the Lord's table? So, uh... Pastor, would you like to help us uh, with answering this question? Sure. Pastor? Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you for the question, Paul. So one is uh, in the New Testament, uh, we don't have any clear statement that somebody has to be water baptized in order to partake of the Lord's table. Uh, what we do understand is that, um, you know, somebody has to be a believer. They have to believe in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has done for us through his death, burial and resurrection in order to meaningfully partake of the Lord's table. So uh, so that's one reason why, you know, every time we do the Lord's table, uh, we take a few minutes just to uh, talk about the cross. Of course, we don't preach a full sermon on the cross, but just a few minutes to say, you know, this is what Jesus did for us on the cross, and this is what partaking of the Lord's table is, and therefore you're welcome to partake. So, you know, from a pastoral side, we do that every time, you know, just take maybe a few minutes, five minutes or less, saying this is what Jesus did on the cross, and this is what the elements mean, and therefore we are partaking. And all who believe are welcome to partake. So from because the New Testament doesn't categorically state that somebody has to be water baptized, uh, to partake of the Lord's table. I think it's not right for us to bring in that. But some denominations do, uh, but we don't. You know, For us, we understand that as long as they believe in Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior and, uh, uh, and understand the meaning of the cross, they're welcome to partake. So we would just leave it at that. So for example, these people, uh, and it doesn't, you know, it could be from other faiths, it could be people who've been in church, but they haven't paid any attention to the Bible. So it really doesn't matter. The point is, as long as they have believed in Jesus and they understand, have trusted in Christ to be their Lord and Savior, uh, they're welcome to partake. Now, subsequently, you know, when the time is right, they may be water baptized. For example, the same thing we do in children's church. We serve communion in children's church. Uh, so children partake of the Lord's table. And they will get water baptized, you know, at some point later, maybe when they, whenever they are ready. So, but they start partaking of the Lord's table from an early age uh, because they understand the, you know, what Jesus did for them on the cross in their, in their, at their level. So um, that's what I would say that, uh, you know, really doesn't matter if they are from a non-Christian background or a Christian background, as long as they're believers, in Jesus Christ, they understand what Christ did for them on the cross. They welcome to partake on the Lord's table, and at some point later, whenever they are ready, uh, they will be water baptized. Is that okay, Paul? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. 
uh, we also have one last question from Isaac Wandi. In my sharing, I stated that the leadership of a ministry is asked that I be ordained. Is it acceptable to ordain now or way to continue my studies to get more insight in the word of God? Pastor, would you like to answer this, please? Um, you know, um, I, I, I guess um, it all depends on what this ordination is for. Uh, if it is, you know, I, okay, let's say in general, this ordination is really uh, an appointment into a place of spiritual leadership. That means they're saying they're setting you into a place of spiritual leadership and responsibility over the people. Uh, so that is a very serious thing. Right? Uh, if you're if if somebody's being appointed to be an usher, okay, that's fine. Or somebody's being appointed to be, you know, uh, in some other, you know, helps type of role. Okay, that's that's plain and simple. But if somebody, but I, I, if you're being ordained into, you know, the, the way the Bible is talking about in terms of a place of spiritual leadership, then I think it is a very serious matter. And if you go by the scripture, and I'm I'm just looking at First Timothy chapter three, and I'm also looking at First um, Timothy chapter five, in both these places, uh, we find that uh, in a while it's to be a spiritual leader is a good thing. Paul starts off that way. First Timothy chapter three, verse one, he says, you know, if any man desires the role of a bishop or a spiritual leader, he desires a good thing, but here are the things that we have to look for. You know, that means make sure he has, he comes into this place of maturity before putting him, uh, appointing him into that place of leadership. That in other words, go slow, don't be in a hurry. And that's what he says in First Timothy chapter five, he says, lay hands suddenly on no man. You know, what's he talking about? Don't appoint somebody in leadership in a hurry. So my response to you, Isaac, um, from what you have shared, I think it's a place of spiritual leadership in the church. Uh, and I would suggest uh, just based on scripture, go slow. That means there's no hurry. You know, you can ask them for one more year and say, okay, you know what? I, I love to be a leader but just give me a year and a year from now I should be ready. And the most important thing is to prove your calling first. You know, uh, that means first do the work. You know, uh, first you start serving, first you start leading, first you start spiritually nurturing people. Uh, and after you do that for one or two years, then it makes sense to be ordained into that. You know, the Bible always says, prove your calling first, right? So do the work first. When you have signs of fruit, in that area, then you appoint somebody uh, into that place rather than appointing them first and then expecting them to serve. And if that doesn't happen, then it's a big mess actually. So my suggestion would be wait for one or two years, serve in those one or two years spiritually, prove the calling, see fruit coming, then you can have uh, people uh, appoint you if that's okay. Uh, I don't want to disappoint you or anything, but uh, I'm just sure. Is that okay, Isaac? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's okay. But um, like I'm saying, I'm interested in the teaching ministry. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. yeah, I'm interested in the teaching ministry. And okay. uh, okay. yeah, there is a vacuum. Um, I mean, like my wife, she mm -hmm. has a calling. Yeah, she has a calling. She started the church. She has a calling mm -hmm. for for prayer. She has a calling for prophecy. Uh, okay, she can preach, but there is a vacuum, and uh, we have young people that have come to the ministry. I think uh, they need tutorial, and uh, mm -hmm. from the little, yeah, from the insight I'm getting. I think I will prepare to to teach, like he said. Mm -hmm. But I will, I will discuss with the with the leadership of the ministry more. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Isaac. Thank you, and uh, thank you each one of you all for participating in today's mentoring session. It's eight forty nine, and we are running out of time. So we can go ahead, pray, and wrap up this session. Uh,
yeah i see sex is uh you know has raised his hand uh okay uh, yes please sex is you can let us know good morning everyone good morning my pastors my teacher my lecturer um please i'm looking at the timing i would have been participating fully in all this lecture that i'm missing some some time like now this is 4:20 a.m and before in nigeria time i i just get awake and i saw that lecture is gone if there's any way they can adjust the time for us so that we can also be participate fully in especially that 8 o'clock uh, a.m hours in your country because i'm we i'm not finding it funny that's my my what i want to say my opinion if we can adjust the time so that we can also be participated in the a uh, lecture fully thank you mm. uh pastor can you answer because i could not uh, uh, hear him clearly okay okay yeah as uh, uh, enoch was uh, talking about the time uh, 8 o'clock 8 a.m here in india uh, especially this uh, this first hour uh, is you know like 4 o'clock or something there uh, where where in africa um yeah you know um so we uh here's the here's the situation we uh, i know there are several people from africa but then there are also people from the other side of the world like abraham is from vietnam uh, and so it's probably in, in the afternoon there and then we have some people like uh, from uh, i think all the way up to new zealand for them uh, like 8 o'clock in the morning india time is like 3:30 in the afternoon over there so it is um, yeah i i know it's inconvenient uh for people uh, you know just because of the time zone difference uh but what what um, what i would say at this point uh, is that uh, you know these things are recorded uh, so you could always listen to the recordings if you like to uh but maybe next semester we will see you know one option like what we used to do was we used to have some of our sessions at uh 12 in the noon to 1 you know that's that's way that's what we used to have supernatural hour 12 to 1 indian time that would be fine uh, that would be more convenient for you know uh, so uh, let's just think about it uh, and 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 we will you know um, maybe if not this semester definitely we can try to adjust uh, next semester but we will definitely keep this thought in mind thank you for bringing it thank you so much i'm grateful i'm so grateful about that thank, thank you so much thank you thank you pastor to for answering this question and uh, yes as time is up can we wrap this session with a word of prayer can i request john paul to please wrap with a word of prayer please yeah father we want to thank you for this time of learning from each other and sharing the experiences of growing up uh, through your word of god and we thank you for all our faculties all our students we pray that even as we continue to learn from your word um, that we would be enriched and be equipped to share your word and um, to to reach out to people who are uh, in sin lord jesus and help us to uh, make use of every knowledge that we are learning to uh, to the benefit of the kingdom lord jesus yes. we thank you for all our teachers we thank you for all the uh, uh the faculties who are helping us lord we thank you god in jesus precious name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you so much for joining in today's mentoring class see you all tomorrow god bless thank you thank you god thank bless. you my pastors thank you my leader thank you my mentors thank you thank you enoch god bless Thank you. Amen. Thank you pastors. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you sister Rupa for joining. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.